Hello, my name is Michael Prom, Applications Engineer for Applied Engineering. This video is going to show off the new sketch block layout functionality in Inventor 2010. So you can see when I open up Inventor here, I have a sketch already open with some blocks inserted inside of it. I've constrained these blocks to act as though they were in an assembly. What I'm going to do now is add a new AutoCAD block to this assembly to build up my sketch block layout. You can see I have an option in here to convert into an AutoCAD or Autodesk Inventor format. This is going to allow me to build up this model in 3D later. Now once I have this inserted, I'm going to constrain it just like I would like in an assembly. The horizontal constraint placed on here, I can now move this block just like it will when it's uh, functioning as an assembly. With another constraint added, you can see how my separate blocks now move together as a literal assembly. And what I can do is uh, create concepts for my design creation, make sure the functionality of them work before I actually create any 3D models. So this is going to save me time uh, when I'm building up an assembly. I'm going to add another block in here just to add a couple more um, features. And you can see when with the, some more constraints placed on this, the movement of one part is going to be able to validate the functionality of this assembly. Again, what this mainly is is just another workflow that we can add in our bag of tricks in, uh, as far as solid modeling. So we, we have top down design, we also have bottom up design, and here now we're exploring the sketch block layout. Now with this sketch, I want to now add a UCS. So this is new functionality for 2010. What this allows me to do is uh, put in a coordinate system after I've built up an assembly and I can utilize this coordinate system when I'm inserting this assembly into another assembly. So with a UCS inserted, I'm now going to switch over to an assembly that I want to insert this into and I'm going to place the sketch block assembly into another assembly. Now you'll notice that they both have a UCS so under my constraints I have a new constraint tool that allows me to mate these two sub-assemblies together in one step, uh, whereas this would normally take me multiple steps. I'm now going to close out of my other sketch model, and uh, so I can, in my main assembly here, continue to build up my model. So now in this assembly, you'll notice if I open this up that it's still going to function just like it did as a single part, um, but now I'm in an assembly and I want to see this movement. So the first thing I want to do with this is uh, change over the single part with the sketch into multiple components. So I'm going to use that same Make Components tab that I actually did in my first video, which allows me to take all these different um, blocks in my sketch, and I'm coming in and picking my templates now. I can turn these now into each a separate component. Now this is very important because in my next step I'm going to turn one of these components, that's a block, into an actual 3D component. So um, again this is that workflow of going from a sketch block into a full 3D assembly. I've already validated my design, the functionality, and I now want to start building up this 2D sketch into 3D components. So I've made my uh, separate components and I'm now just going to select that lever that I chose earlier and see I still have the, the movement capabilities and I'm going to grab that lever and I'm going to start editing that lever and building it up um, just like I would in a normal top-down design functionality I can come in with my extrude tool select my parameters just as though this was uh, a simple part from a start continue up building up this lever, I'm just going to use a couple design planes here where are going to allow me to do a, a from to, so I'm not uh, limited of where I'm building up this middle section of my lever from. And with this complete, I can now come in and start selecting my, my sketch that's from the original block into the from to and uh, I can finish building up this lever. Now once I have this completed, something else to note that's very important is that I have the capability now of without putting any more constraints or anything into it, all that information comes over and so when I move my assembly here, you can see 
it still functions just like it did when it's a sketch block. So all that time I put into at the beginning of this is actually carried over now into the, the layout and the buildup of my full assembly.